Welcome to the Entrepreneurial CPA Series, where we bring you the best and brightest SaaS solutions for CPAs who want to bring value-added services to their clients. Every episode is an interview with a new solution provider dedicated to you, tomorrow's CPA. The Entrepreneurial CPA Series is proudly sponsored by Excolo 33, Building Value. Visit us at excolo33.com. Are you a partner of a CPA firm struggling to be seen as the expert in a sea of sameness? Are you looking to differentiate yourself and your firm as providing true value added services and not just ticking boxes on your client's compliance checklist? Excola 33 is a coaching business dedicated to accelerating growth and profitability in your CPA firm. Our 100 day business growth challenge has helped firms just like yours generate leads, create profitable relationships and stand out as tomorrow's CPA firm. Sign up for Excola 33's free training, eight steps to productize your service, where you will discover three reasons service companies are getting hit hard now. You will learn the surprising secret that Harvard professor Theodore Levitt taught his students about why we buy. See how nine service businesses transform themselves into product companies and get the eight step formula for productizing your service. Click the link below or visit us at bit.ly slash text eight steps. Again, the link is below. This is a free course. It's a workshop and we'll walk you through how you can implement the eight steps to productize your service. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Entrepreneurial CPA Series. Today, I'm really excited to talk with Carl Mayer. Carl founded Abundant to provide practical tools for building great management teams. Carl has over 25 years of experience managing and advising rapidly growing small and lower middle market companies. Leveraging his successes, Carl developed the Abundant Framework and led the development of the Abundant Tools app. So drawing on Carl's experience as a consultative CPA and business advisor, the Abundant Tools app uses proven tools and an easy to format guide, sorry, easy to use format to guide clients to build the habit of working on their business, not just in it. Welcome, Carl. Tell me, how did you come up with the idea of Abundant? How did that idea evolve? Right. So I've been, as, uh, as you mentioned, working with, uh, you know, kind of lower middle market companies, generally, you know, 10 to 100 people in the company for probably over 25 years now. First started working with my family's company, the family business, and um, eventually worked with in companies, founded companies, worked for other family companies, consulted. And when the pandemic hit, you know, really kind of was thinking about, you know, what do I offer? How do I do this? You know, good time to kind of reassess everything and really realized, you know, I'd been using these same tools over and over again with all the companies that I've been working with. And so that's where I kind of had the idea, well, you know, if you're using the same tools over and over in spreadsheets and PDFs and things like that, why not put it into software you know, that would make it easier for everybody to use, both clients, consultants, coaches, managers. Yeah. Are you on mute, Jeff? Yeah, technology issues today. Uh, so you are a CPA. How did you go from being a CPA? And, and again, I know that you evolved, but how did you evolve from being a traditional CPA to being more consultative? Well, I've, I've kind of always had a consultive approach. Uh, that was really um, where I came from. So I got my CPA because I was working in the consulting group of one of the, it was back then the big eight. Um, and so, you know, I had the accounting you know, background, you know, training, uh, certainly got my CPA, kept up my CPA over the years. At this point, I've, uh, uh, I'm not, uh, not doing that actively anymore. But um, 
you know, having the financial background to understand, you know, what's going on in the, you know, the clients companies, you know, really helped me advise companies and do the analysis much, much more effectively. So, you know, I didn't kind of really come up through the traditional auditor tax um, programs. So, okay, a little different Great. path. Yeah. <laughs> and, and how long has Abundant been around? Um, and, and tell me what the early days of Abundant looked like for you. So originally Abundant was a consulting company. So uh, we would offer the services of, you know, analyzing the situation, making recommendations, even going in and helping execute some of those um, situations. So it was very much a services company. And it really was in 2020 that we made the transition to a software company. Um, so that was that was kind of the journey. Very cool. <clears throat> and you made a big pivot in times of COVID. So tell me what was, first of all, th th this is just your chance to brag a little, but what's the big milestone that you're most proud of in, in the company? And what was the, the root of that? How did that come about? Well, the, the kind of timeline really started with, you know, the pandemic. And so I had a number of clients that I was working with, everything was going great. Then this little pandemic hit and several of the companies I was working with, you know, a couple of them were, you know, very kind of event, large group focused. And so they just had to shut down. There was no way they could do that. And, but a couple of companies I was working with pivoted from one opportunity to another. One of them um, ended up going into bottling um, hand sanitizer and you know had a lot of success doing that. So for the first few months of the pandemic, I really was helping those couple of companies do their pivot. So that was um, the focus. At that same time, I was, you know, had the idea and kind of doing the background planning for the software. And so once we kind of successfully did those pivots, my workload dropped off. So the opportunity cost was a little bit lower to spend the time on the software at that point. And, you know, I didn't know exactly, you know, I had some general ideas of what I wanted the software to be, but I really kind of dug into the software programming itself. I've got some background in that. I've started a couple of other software companies and my MBA was in inf information systems. So um, I did the, some of the initial programming, had the feedback loop so I could kind of adjust it. And then I still had a, a couple of clients that I was working with on just an advisory basis. And so I could use those as guinea pigs for um, you know revising the software. And it took really until January to, to get it done. So uh, the first kind of the first draft of it. Um, and so that was kind of the, the journey and, you know, creating the software with all the different tools and the suite of tools really, I feel like is, you know, at this point, Abundance most not notable achievement. Very cool. <clears throat> and now, <clears throat> sorry, I've allergy season apparently um yes. tell me about who would be a typical user of abundant i know you and i had talked before about cpas Let, let's drop into that space um i'm a typical compliance cpa i'm i'm looking to add some value to my clients how would i do that with abundant right so <clears throat> You know, as you're doing your compliance work, obviously, you know, you learn, build a relationship, learn about the clients, their situation. And I'm sure, you know, from time to time, you see situations where companies are trying to grow, maybe they express some frustration. And just from a kind of common business sense, having a little bit of organization in a company is is helpful you know so if you're running your own practice obviously you know how things are organized you've got some kind of process and so bringing some of those same approaches 
to help your clients, you know, typically it's not, it's not a huge leap, you know, necessarily. Now you, you got to be cautious. You don't want to, you know, overstate, but, you know, for example, saying maybe having an org chart would be something that would, you know, help you get a perspective on your company. Not a, you know, it's not a, a big jump to, to offer that kind of uh, suggestion to somebody, you know, having a basic, you know, short kind of one page business plan. Again, that's not a radical solution. So those are the, the types of tools that usually um, advisors, you know, kind of consultative CPAs tend to use to say, I want to, you know, help my client, I want to offer them, you know, base, you know, some basic tools that most companies really should have. So that's, that's the typical way you kind of get started. Awesome. And now, does one have to be 100% versed? Or is there some, what kind of training or, or community do you have to help? Because um, I, I know, you and I have talked about this, there's a lot of traditional CPAs who sat back and went, well, was me, COVID was a rough ride, um, you know, and, and really didn't know where to start. So what's the starting point for somebody who is thinking, I'd really like to add some value to my clients, I just don't know how. Right, right. And we do offer a boot camp, um, you know, a, a training over the course of several weeks, where it's interactive, you have the opportunity to both learn the, the tool, the software, and, you know, get ideas about how to, you know, introduce it into your client, handle some of the common problems, challenges, questions that, you know, might come up in terms of working with a, uh, a company, you know, practical examples. And so that, that's a way to really make it, you know, easier, you know, it's like a CPA, cor CPE course, effectively, right. it's doesn't count as CPE, just make sure I'm clear there. <laughs> just to be clear. Awesome. And, right. and I think um, one of the conversations I have is, you know, learning how to serve our customers better. Um, our primary motivation shouldn't be CPE, it should be serving our customers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, now, again, this is a, a relatively new project for you, but what kind of feedback are you hearing? Because one of the things I'm hearing a lot of accountants and, and I want to really nip this in the bud because I think, um, you know, the world will tell us we're a commodity and we're being replaced by the robots and the bots and things like that. And I, I personally disagree with that wholeheartedly because, you know, the, the robots will hopefully never replace relationships. They'll never replace um, the ability to care. Um, so for those that would say, you know, woe is me, compliance is dying, um, what would you say to that? And then I want to talk about the feedback you're getting from your end user client. So first of all, let's talk about the, uh, the death of compliance, which I'd love your thoughts on that. Right, right. Well, you know, if you look at the, the advances in software, you know, just for tax prep, you know, it saves a lot of time, but it hasn't replaced the tax professional, you know, at this point by any stretch. You know, I think technology is going to keep moving forward, but I see it as just kind of pushing the service provider up the value chain even more, you know, so you've got more and more opportunity to leverage the tools, you know, just, you know, with the abundant tools, I think it, you know, if you're going to make an org chart, what do most people do right now? They get Excel or they get PowerPoint and, oh my God, I've done that, you know, and I, you know, I've taken that org chart and I've made notes with the client. I take it back and the next day I'm trying to figure out my notes and do it on power. It takes forever. Oh my God. This guy writing, what was his handwriting about? I can't read it. <laughs> right. You know, and, you know, okay, I can read the writing, but what did he mean? Was that the, you know, oh my gosh. And what was I instead, thinking at this moment? Right. Instead, if we can do it, you know, in real time on software with drag, drop, you know, edit, save, boom, we're done. And you can do it either virtually, you know, um, so you can do it over a Zoom call or, you know, Google call, or you can do it 
you know, live in person, you can share a screen, you can put it up on the conference screen. You've just, you know, you've, you haven't, you know, taken anything away from the advice. In fact, you've made the advice that much more effective. You're no longer billing for two hours worth of dragging PowerPoint around, you know, now you're billing for the value that you're adding. And so I see that as technology enabling even better service. And, um, you know, there is change that's, you know, change evolve. It's not necessarily pure compliance anymore, but having that organization, I've got a, uh, a CPA that does compliance work. And one of the situations that we were working through was situation where you've got this entrepreneur with eight different businesses and he's trying to figure out how they all fit together. And so he was actually using the org chart is a way to both put the corporate entities and the people in each entities together so he could properly do payroll, properly roll up the corporate taxes, allocate expenses and assets between the different entities. And so it was a tool to help him both communicate with the client and then also to you know, provide better service. And Carl, if I may pull a couple of things out of there, and, and then I want to hear some customer experiences, but the, the big things I heard, and I want to make sure I'm putting a nice big underlying bold on it, is that technology is not meant to replace relationship. It's not meant to replace communication. It's really a tool to augment it. And I think that's when I looked at Abundant and you and I first talked, I got really excited because it's literally a tool to facilitate conversations. Am I overstating that or is that a fair comment? I think that's a fantastic comment. I really do. Um, yes, it's in fact, one of the tool, a couple of the specific tools are truly about, you know, conversations within meetings. And, you know, you know, whether it's a management meeting or a one on meeting with a supervisor and a direct report, you know, and but more, you know, to step back a level more broadly. Yes, the whole tool is about communication, more effective communication. Um, you know, that I mean, as a as a practitioner, how many times, you know, do you say, wow, I didn't get all the data. <laughs> you didn't tell me about that situation. Yeah, I mean. Communication is a huge part of what any CPA does. Love it. And, you know, in, on your website, you talk about raising your price, retaining clients um, and serving more clients. The, the big thing I'm going to pull out of that commentary is that you're adding value. Um, and, and that's the thing. If you're just trying to be, you know, if you're trying to be the compliance person who just does the tax return, um, you have a lot of competition. But if you're actually a trusted advisor who stepped into that role and, you know, you're actually communicating with your clients on a regular basis, and, and just to be clear, I'm not saying, hey, we need this piece of paper, we need that paper. To me, that's nagging, not communicating, but just actually have bona fide conversations where you sit down and say, tell me about your hopes and dreams for your business. Um, those clients are going to be around a lot longer. Um, Tell me about your favorite client experience you've had since you started using Abundant yourself. Right. Right. Well, uh, one situation that came up was um, a, a company that I'd, I, I knew the, the founders for a long time, and they hit a situation where they were having internally kind of a owner to owner communication problem be a good way to put it. They were getting into arguments, decisions weren't being made. And they said, Hey, Carl, could you, you know, come in and, and help a little bit? Uh, you know, maybe you can give us some guidance on getting through this situation. And we started using the abundant tool to run the management meetings. And it brought a structure to the management meetings. So it started to set expectations that, you know, this is how we're going to identify issues. And then this is how we're going to prioritize issues. And this is how we're going to discuss issues. And we started with, you know, kind of some easy, you know, not high conflict items, but to kind of get the habit of, okay, <laughs> that works. 
<laughs> yeah. And then later we moved, you know, pretty quickly within a matter of, um, you know, I don't know, six weeks, I think we moved to some of those contentious issues that were yeah. really, you know, causing some, some big arguments. And, you know, there was certainly some discussion, um, but using the, that kind of framework of the meeting was able to, you know, have discussions, you know, let's talk about what are the facts, what are you, the concerns, what are the emotions going on? And um, eventually we were able to get all the people in the meeting to agree that this is the course moving forward. It wasn't the ideal for everybody, but they they got to the point where they could say, I understand why we're making this decision. It might not be my favorite outcome, but given the discussion, I'm comfortable moving forward. And it was a huge leap forward for the company. So that was one situation that came up. Love it. And, and I think that's, you know, one of the things I really love, everyone likes to beat up the, the accountants out there, but the reality is, I think we make trusted advisors, we're naturally good in that role because we can look at things impartially, because we can have those candid conversations. And one of the things I, I, I'd love your opinion on when I talk to people, the bigger the problem we solve, the, the more value we add, and therefore, the more our clients value us. Um, would you agree with that? Or, and, and how would Abundant tie into that? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that's so common these days is we've got all the baby boomers then, you know, starting to think about, wow, well, how do I retire? How do I exit? You know, and, you know, the first part of that is where do you want to go? You know, and, you know, as a, you know, CPA, you know, so many of us already have some, you know, experience and tools for exit planning. But the first thing is, where do you want to, you've got to know your goal. And then we got to start, okay, if in X years, I want to get here, well, what do we, you know, if it's 10 year plan to exit, what do we need to do in three years and five years to be ready so that we can move to that? What do we need to do in one year? And so having just a simple, you know, short plan that it kind of spells that out adds a ton of value as well. And then you get in, then you can do the analysis you know, the financial analysis to support those goals. And I think that's a really powerful situation for, for CPAs. I love it. Now, we're going to wrap up in a couple of minutes here, but uh, I just wanted to give you a chance. Is there anything I haven't asked you about that you've been dying to tell me about Abundant or your ambassador program? Uh, this is the, oh, I forgot to tell Jeff this moment. So is there anything that our audience of CPAs shouldn't leave this call without learning before we wrap up? Um, you know, I think the one thing would be the Abundant Ambassador Program is the program that we uh, offer that really provides, you know, a little bit of marketing support. It provides the boot camp and it provides uh, some extra tools that aren't available to the end user. If you just go to the website and look at the pricing page, You'll, you'll find um, that's the end user pricing. The ambassador program has some kind of volume discounts, if you will. So I think that's a, that's a useful thing to know. And if uh, anybody's interested in that, there's uh, you know, some links there to uh, leads towards a conversation with myself. Perfect. Now, not necessarily just about the software, the ambassador program, but you know, you as, as a CPA talking to other CPAs, what are a couple of action steps that people watching this should take right now to help them pivot or adapt to, you know, the, the changing world that is 2021? Mm -hmm. You know, I prioritize a little more conversation with the, with the clients to me, that's the number one thing. That's where it all starts. You know, um, you know, sometimes you'll have, you know, coffee or, or lunch with a particularly good client or just a phone call and un just understanding a little bit more about where they want to go and what problems they're having can lead you to a whole range of services that you might, you know, enjoy offering. I love it. <clears throat> now, you pivoted in 2020 slash 2021 and 
you know, to me, that is a huge, huge thing. Um, and, and this is not on the agenda, but I just want to ask you, um, how did you know you were doing the right thing when everybody else, I mean, looking back a year ago in 2020, the world was, you know, duck and cover and, and you know, defense, not offense. Um, what gave you the courage? And, and I also want to hear about the fox behind you, but what gave you the courage to pivot when everybody else was saying duck and cover? You know, it really came down to 25 years of what worked. I didn't, you know, all the, uh, if you read the textbooks for startups, you should go interview a hundred people. And basically I, you know, I said, I've already worked with well over a hundred small businesses over the years. And I know so many advisors, you know, of various flavors, you know, from, you know, my experience. And I just felt like these are the tools that if I was that business owner, I would want my advisors to have. And so that I really kind of went on a leap of faith, you know, my experience and said, I'm going to give it a try. And worst case, I'll have the tools to use, you know, for myself. <laughs> Love it. I mean, that's a true entrepreneur. You had a problem, you created the solution to your problem. And then looked at it and said, oh, the world needs this. I can, I can do more with this. So well done. Um, any parting thoughts for our CPAs before we wrap up, Carl? You know. Um, oh, yes, the fox. Keep, keep a fox handy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I actually, uh, I've got a, a variety of uh, small stuffed animals that I like to keep. We do all, you know, the Zoom calls these days. So it's a way to show, you know, a little bit of the, um, you know, kind of human softer side of uh, the, the CPA and me, the very, you know, analytical, perhaps not as outwardly emotional personality that I bring to the situation. So that's, uh, that's something I, I like to do. Love it. Well, thank you. And I know, I think you had different stuff animals last time we talked. Um, th that's my key takeaway. And, and Carl, I really, really appreciate it. There's a lot of value here, but my key takeaway is we do business with people that we know, like, and trust. So if we can let our clients know that we are authentic, genuine human beings, um, they're going to open up to us more. They're going to share things. Um, so I, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me. Um, so we've been talking with Carl Meyer, the founder of Abundant. And Carl, where can our listeners go to find out more about you or Abundant? So um, the easiest place is go to Abundant.com. And when I say Abundant, I'd like to say a hamburger bun in a fox's den. So that's the A Bun Den helps you with nice. the spelling as well. And uh, of course, if you're uh, on LinkedIn, you can go find Carl Meyer uh, there as well. So be happy to connect with you. Awesome. And we'll, we'll put the link um, to the ambassador program. I, I encourage everybody to check it out. Maybe it's for you, maybe it isn't. But if you don't check it out and it is for you, you've missed out and you've lost a chance to serve your clients. So check it out. Um, thank you so much for your time today, Carl, and we'll put that information up on our show notes. Fantastic, Jeff. Thank you so much.